Thank you, folks. It gives us great pleasure, first of all, to bring our good friend out, Annette Insorf, to lead this conversation. <laughs> and please welcome director of the film, Iran Kularain. Iran, thank you so much. Hey. <coughs> welcome, everyone. And um, I think we should start with a little surprise announcement. I have been told that today is the birthday of the director, Eran oh. Kualirin, <laughs> and I just want to say happy birthday in addition thank to you. welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> thank you. That's like a burning muffin. Yeah, I need to blow, okay. Thank you. <laughs> there'll, there'll be more dessert later upstairs. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I know we don't have too much time. I have a few questions of my own and hope to also include some of the questions from you. I just realized I've never been in the new space before and it is gorgeous from here. Um, congratulations. Thank you. And I want to start with a question about the origin of the film. I know that it is based on the novel of Sayyid Kashua from 2004. Some of you may know his name also from the film Dancing Arabs from 2014, directed by Iran Ricklin. Could you tell us how you decided to get involved in making it? Oh, wow. Uh, I think it began around eight years ago. I got a call from uh, Karen Michael, the producer of the film, saying that she and Syed want to meet with me. And I met with her and Syed, and they proposed. And then Syed said, "I like the band's visit. I have the I have this other book, uh, this book that I wrote about a uh, village getting under siege." Well, at the time, it really sounded like an invitation for a public suicide. To be honest. It was like, oh, I know the discourse, a Jew making a film, Palestinian, Arab, I'm going to be hanged. I'm going to be hanged at the public square somewhere. But I was depressed at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, public suicide, it feel like a, a way out. <laughs> um, so, you know, I said, I mean, I said, well, maybe, maybe films should be impossible. Um, maybe we should try to make what is impossible. And uh, maybe I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll just try, you know, I'll be there. I don't know how, I'll just be there, I'll just speak, I'll just see and see where it gets me you know and if i come alive on the other side then i have eternity and if i'm dead in the middle so you know <laughs> it's been a nice run um so i didn't die i don't think i have eternity but i'm happy to just have um, a proper conversation in this world, <laughs> which is also something that doesn't really happen much. <laughs> I think there's a, a slight sense of irony for me watching this film. I know that the novel comes from 2004, but it's the tale of a lockdown, right, of a Palestinian village sealed off by the Israel Defense Forces. But we're watching this in the sort of immediate aftermath of the worst of COVID. Yeah. Were you thinking at all of the COVID lockdown, or was this all shot beforehand? No, it was shot before the lo COVID lockdown. Uh, we had this one scene where about the sanitizer jails when she's like uh, making this speech about, and it was one of those scenes, you know, it's kind of a scene that you don't really need dramatically in a way. So it was one of those scenes that were, uh, 
you know, in the cat and out of the cat and in the cat. And then COVID came and we said, no, it has to be, it has to be inside because somehow it's so accurate about this general feeling of wanting to sanitize yourself from guilt or whatever w it is, you know, just, and it's so, it's, it's amazing how those primary feelings are, you know, apparent in life. Be you know, you get into a closure and then you feel you need to sanitize yourself in order to be pure, to, I don't know, to relieve the gods out of their anger <laughs> or something. <laughs> and yet there is a specificity to your film. I mean, for example, I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about the Dafawis. Um, are they really the reason, in terms of the plot, are they really the reason for the lockdown? Yeah, no, I don't think. Also in Saeed's book, they are not, they are in a way a scapegoat. Uh, uh, and, and what I really felt was strong about Said novel and was this thing with the Dafawis, because I always, I seen this, this story as like a ripples of closures, you know, it's like, there's this closure around the person, and there's this closure around the person and his wife, and then there's closure about him and his family. And then they have this closure with us and the Dafawis, and then everybody has closure between us and the Israeli. So there was this, ev and I thought it was very, very beautiful because in a way what he was saying that, you know, once you close a, min a minority, the minority uh, has a tendency to close another minority. And in a way, this is why it's relevant also for Jewish public, because why, what is the Jewish public if not a, a has-been minority who is now closing another minority? So there's this everlasting, clo you know, Every every class <laughs> closes the lesser class because for some reason he thinks that the lesser class is the reason for his problem and never never the upper <laughs> class, you know. <laughs> so there's something very strong about, you know, the way he got it in the novel. Well, the way you're describing it, the sort of concentric circles, um, that's one thing, but the film ends with a kind of limbo, right? It's, it's that, that final shot. They don't move. And I was wondering, do you see that ending as a kind of metaphor for the Palestinian mentality in Israel? That, you know, they've been shuttered in in a certain sense so long that even when the gates are open, they don't move. No, I, d I don't think about things like that, the Palestinian mentality. I don't think that there is... To be honest, this ending, I mean, I don't want to go into this one of, I'm, I'm not telling that as a kind of a fire starter, but it came from my grandmother's stories about the ending of the war. And, you know, once I got the, this story about closure, I remember her story was always about her and her sister being in, you know, in the death march in some icy, uh, you know, woods somewhere. And she always told there was one morning that we woke up and it sounded different. And she said, we all crawled out of our little, you know, how do you say, train things. And she said there were nobody there. <laughs> no God, no nothing. And s there were people afraid to go out. There were people afraid. So I believe it's just, it's not about certain mentality, it's about, you know, all those stupid, stupid violence ending always with the mundane, the nothingness of why was it, why? <laughs> why was it all about and what does it mean? So this is the f question they asked, they are facing. It's not a metaphor for what, you know, Although early on in the film, you have those at the wedding doves that are supposed to ascend to the sky. Yeah. They've been in the cage so long 
that they have to be prodded and even then they can't fly, they just kind of waddle out. And I, I, I couldn't help but feel towards the end of the film that that was a kind of preparatory metaphor for the end. No, of course it's, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's uh, interact with the first shot, of course. But let's imagine you're a dove and you're kept in a cage for like 20 days. Then you are hustled into a wedding and everybody. So are you like walking out and flying on the spot? No, you are like, <laughs> what the fuck? Why was I, why was I in a, why was I caged for so long? Why and who are all those people and what was this about, you know? I would also feel like I've lost my flying muscles and I would need to get back in training. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, if you're in a cage for I don't know how long, you will, you will lose your, uh, mus your flying muscles. <laughs> and I want to revisit something. I, I shouldn't have used the word Palestinian mentality. That sounds academic and inappropriate. Mm. I want to know more about the Palestinians who have seen your film. Because obviously it's been a huge success at 1-7 Ophir is the equivalent of our Academy Awards, but how have Palestinian audiences responded? Uh, so, uh, at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, it's the same question as asking how does Israeli crowd, you know? <laughs> so if I take the Jewish crowd, some of them hated the film, some of them loved the film, some of them were, you know, just not here and not, that's the way people are. And you know, I guess that if we get this crowd here, there will be someone who loves it, someone who hates it, someone who doesn't give uh, you know, a, sh a damn about, you know. So, and I will guess that in the same way, if we get Palestinians, <laughs> they, they, you know, I, there will be a Palestinian who loved the film, there will be a Palestinian who hates the film. And our, you know, this thought that we have, that people have this kind of mentality that is, that's 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 a wrong question, you know. That's 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 not the way I see it, at least. You know, <laughs> and and I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and by the way, I, I can't see because the lights are strong. If there's a way to raise the lights for the back of the hall, if there are questions, I would love to recognize some of them, even though I have a few more of my own to ask. If there is someone, or just shout it. Oh, now I can start to see people. Okay. If there is anyone, please raise your hand. I also wanted to invoke, well, uh, actually there is a hand that just came up over there. Yes, go right ahead. And there's a microphone coming to you. I just had a question about the geography specifically, where you imagined that village, specific, or if it was just metaphoric, exactly where it was in terms of the West, I assume it was in the West Bank, uh, or not? Well, Syed Book uh, <laughs> takes place in the the triangle area, which is just next to the West Bank. When I came to make the film, I didn't want it to be in a specific place. Uh, I mean, not necessarily. I want, I wanted the film to have this general feeling like once upon a time in a small village somewhere, you know, is being closed. So I didn't, I tried not to, uh, you know, have any details that would necessarily, uh, you know, get it into a certain place because I don't, I didn't think that this is necessarily for me the question. The question is every time when someone is blocking another, g another ethnic group or whatever, that's the circle, that's how it goes, that's how the vortex of identity works, you know. The gentleman all the way in the back there. <coughs> I just want to ask the question, shouldn't the question be how do Israeli Arabs feel rather than how do Palestinians feel? I mean, well, uh, I mean it could be both, but it, the question, I mean, these were Israeli Arabs. Well, right, the, the but term they are citizens of the country. The, the, well, okay. Um, let me explain something. Th these are Palestinians that hold Israeli citizenship. That's most of them will uh, identify themselves as Palestinians. I mean, the term Arab Israelis is actually a term invented by the government, in a way, in order to erase the Palestinian entity. 
So, I, I mean, none of the actors that I have worked with have, have described themselves as Arab Israelis. So this, for them, was completely a term invented by the establishment. So personally, I respect that. I mean, whatever someone identify himself, that's for me his identity. So that's the thing with what you call Arab Israelis, which is a term uh, which has a political meaning of suppression in the end of the day. And even uh, along these lines, I recall when your film was selected for the Cannes Film Festival, mm -hmm. I remember reading that at least three of your Palestinian actors boycotted, they refused to attend because it was labeled an Israeli film even though the funding is partly from France, but they felt that the actual word Israeli was a problem. Yeah, but th that's again a bit of, because, I mean, I was there with them before Khan. we spoke together, we had a lot of discussion about it. They made a very complex and delicate stat st statement, which says, we support the film, we stand behind it, but we have a political problem, and the political problem is valid. So we are happy with the film, we are happy to uh, you know, invest our time in it, we are standing behind it, but what we don't want is to be appropriated as to a, a propaganda machine in some way, to have people saying, okay, this film, uh, represent how Israeli Arabs are working together with oh blah blah blah, and our little pact between us, which is a very personal, was I, I told them, first of all, I will respect and support whatever you you decide to do, and I am here to make sure that this will not be used as part of any propaganda because these people are succeeding in spite. <laughs> in spite of everything that they go, and not because this is a kind of an inclusive system that helps them, no. It happens in spite, so I'm here. So this is what it was. It was a political uh, action, a non-violent, a very respectable political. They, they, they prevented themselves from having some fun drugs and alcohol in Cannes in order to make a statement, which is, Beautiful, you know, and immediately, the, you know, the press they go like they boycotted, they boycotted that. Uh, no, that was n we have a statement. We made a film together in collaboration, in solidarity. I, I'm standing in solidarity with them. They stand in solidarity with the film, and we will, you know, continue to respect each other. And, and, and that is the thing, and not boycott and then blah blah blah. We start to. You know, that's uh, the way I see it, and I believe they also. And, and I think there's a law in Israel that any film that benefits from the Israeli Film Fund has to be labeled an Israeli production, if I understand correctly. Well, the, you know, these are very abstract <laughs> things. I mean, did you ever see, uh, for example, I don't know, Martin Scorsese going on a stage saying, here is my American film. No, you, you will see a French director, here's my beautiful French film. So the question of where the was the thing financed is a different question from the question of I identity. If, I mean, I don't think films have identity, people have identity. So my identity is this and that, I'm a Jew, I'm an Israeli, I'm whatever, and their identity is Palestinian, Christian, whatever. And the culmination of all of that is this. That's, that's what I know, okay? The rest is abstract for me. It's abstract notion and discourse and whatever, but it's abstract. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know we have to leave in a moment because there's a reception upstairs, but you give me the opportunity to say one thing. <coughs> films don't have an identity except foreign films that are gonna be eligible for the Academy Award. This year, for example, let It Be Morning is the Israeli nominee for Best International Feature. 
So that's where <laughs> the identity. Yeah, but that's I, and I agree. But that's the academy business or the business of people. I mean, <laughs> you know. I, okay, so if that's if that's a slot I'm offered, I will take that slot. I, and if I had another slot offered, maybe I would take the other slot, but it's not me, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And it wasn't you, by the way, in 2007 when Dancing Arabs was the nominee from Israel. It ended up disqualified because That's it Bans was visit, not too much <laughs> English language in Bans Bans visit, Bans visit. Not, not Dancing Arabs. Oh, Bans no, Bans I just said, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the band's visit, of course. <laughs> sorry. That's it's been okay. a long day. <laughs> but it was disqualified for too much English, and that's not going to be the case with mm. Let It Be Morning. So <laughs> uh, I've been told that we are at the end of our time. Thank you yeah, so thank much you so for much. joining us. Thank you so much for having us. It was lovely. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Iran. And thank you, Annette, so much for doing this. Folks, continue this conversation. We're going to be having these conversations all week. Please tell your friends and uh, join us upstairs in the lobby for a quick reception. And uh, have a good night. We'll see you soon.